But before I actually get to what I want to talk about, I really, really need to address this. Kylo Ren is the grandson of, of Ben Solo, whatever you want to call him. He's the grandson of Anakin Skywalker. Anakin Skywalker was conceived of the Force and it's been confirmed by George Lucas as in, even in one of the comics that Charles Solo wrote, I believe. Palpatine created the Force essence midichlorians and manipulated them all within Shmi, sorry, to create Anakin. So technically Palpatine is Anakin's father. We have Rey, who is Palpatine's granddaughter, and they kiss in this movie. And they're technically related, and the writers should have known that. Anyone should have known that. People, the story group people should have known that. People who edited this film. People at Lucasfilm should have known this stuff. So if you've seen my video about The Last Jedi and how Ryan Johnson didn't do his homework, you knew that I was going to talk about The Rise of Skywalker. So what I'm going to talk about has already been covered by a YouTuber which I often watch and I subscribe to and I think if you're a Star Wars fan, you should subscribe to them too. Thor Skywalker. So he's talked about this scene actually at the time that I was planning on making this video. So I might be doubling up on a few things he's already talked about. But otherwise, I think you should still go and check his video out. So the scene that I'm talking about is towards the end of the movie where Rey reconnects with the Jedi of the past. It's clear that Chris Terrio and J.J. Abrams who wrote this film didn't really look back at all aspects of Star Wars, heck, any of the prequel movies by the looks of it for this scene. Because what happens is that they have Mace Windu come back, Ayla Sakura, um, Kanan Jarrus, Ahsoka, Anakin, Yoda, Obi-Wan, so many Jedi come back and they seem to treat it as if all the Jedi are still alive in a sense and can connect to Rey. In the real whole world universe of Star Wars, there are only three known Jedi that can do such a thing. But to Luke, obviously many people could imagine he would eventually learn it. Three which are guaranteed that every person knows can reconnect with someone after they die. That being Qui-Gon Jinn, even though he didn't complete the training, Yoda and Obi-Wan Kenobi. Ayla Sakura, Kane and Jairus, they're just Jedi's. They didn't have this ability to, you know, live after dying. The fact that people say this scene is amazing and it could have been better if there were actual Force ghosts is even worse. It's one thing to hear voices, but it's another to actually see the ghost itself. I didn't forget to mention Anakin Skywalker who does become a Force ghost, but he was made of the Force, so it makes sense that he, without doing the training, would return to the Force. They treat it like it's something anyone can do. Kylo Ren, Ben Solo, returns to the Force, but he lives on after, he fades away. But he, of, clearly from what we know from the movies, didn't have time to do this training. He trained with Luke, sure, but then do we assume that every one of Luke's Padawans that died, uh, you know, became one of the Force? The fact that they were able to learn such a thing is just so hard to believe. Leia is someone we can possibly believe, although I don't know how long she's trained with Luke for, and the fact that she hasn't done or completed any of her Jedi training, that raises a few questions. But regardless, this whole idea of the Jedi coming back, it just doesn't make sense, and well, a lot of the movie doesn't make sense, looking at you dagger and everything. So let me know what you thought about this scene in particular. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Do you just like the scene because it's a fun scene? Hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos. Until next time, I'll see you guys.